A dead rock star? Twitter and Boeing are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is July 15th, 2021. It is the 196th day of the year. There are 169 days left. It is the 28th Thursday in the 29th week and the 25th day of summer. You got 69 days left until fall. If today's your birthday, your birthstone is a ruby or an onyx. Today is World Youth Skills Day. World Youth Skills Day seeks to emphasize the importance of engaging young people in the workforce. This day encourages teaching the youth the skills they'll need to be successful and manage their lives in an evolving, challenging world. Youth Skill Day was established in 2014 by the UN's General Assembly. It is observed annually on July 15th. All right, let's see what else July 15th has given us. 1910, in his book, Clinical Psychiatry, Emil Kraepelin, I hope I got that right, gives a name to Alzheimer's disease, naming it after his colleague, Eloise Alzheimer. I did not know it was actually named after a person. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Alzheimer does sound like a very German, Austrian type name. Hmm. Learn something new every day. 1916, in Seattle, Washington, William Boeing and George Conrad Westervelt incorporate Pacific Aero products, later renaming it Boeing. Boy, they've been in the news. They've been raked over the coals lately uh, after those two planes went down and all the different problems they had. I kind of read about that. I should do some more because it was very interesting about those planes that went down, the Ryanair one and the one I think it was in Ethiopia or whatever. The companies that managed those planes didn't buy some software package from Boeing and this would have probably fixed the whole situation. And so it turned into this big thing and all these lawsuits going on. Why is something that's going to save a plane from possibly going down an optional package? It's it's really weird. And I'm just brushing over it. I don't know the whole story. But if you ever get a chance, read about that. 1922, the Japanese Communist Party is established in Japan. 1954, Boeing again. The first flight of the Boeing 367-80 prototype for both the Boeing 707 and C-135 series takes off. 1959, the steel strike of 1959 begins, leading to significant importation of foreign steel for the first time to the United States. Yeah, we used to make our own, then we went on strike and they just started getting it elsewhere. 1979, U.S. President Jimmy Carter gives his malaise speech. If you've never heard this speech or know anything about it, it's very interesting. The United States was not in good shape at the time. We had an energy crisis. There were gas lines around the block. We had just come out of Vietnam. The economy was in shambles. We were still living in the shadow of Watergate. The United States was not in a great place. And Jimmy Carter got on television, primetime, and basically scolded America. He said a couple lines in there that really stuck with me. I saw it years later. Obviously, 79, I wasn't old enough to care about this stuff or anything like that. But he said things like, for the first time, time in United States history, we feel that our children's lives will be worse than ours. You know, we always thought it was going to get better. Now all of a sudden we're thinking, oh, it's not getting better. It's getting worse. That was the first time in American history. Then at the end, he started to tell us basically we have to get it together. We need to pull our heads out of our butts. Basically, he said things that like it's time to stop crying and start sweating, stop talking and start walking. Just things like that. And it was a great speech. A lot of people don't like Jimmy Carter as a president. He's a wonderful human being. This speech was, I feel, from his heart that he didn't like the way the country was going. And he was just kind of trying to remind everyone that we're a great nation and we need to remember that and we need to get out of the rut that we were in. It was, it was a great speech. And then the Winter Olympics came along and we won in hockey and everything got better, I guess. 2002, American Taliban, John Walker Lind, pleads guilty to supplying aid to the enemy and possession of explosives during the commission of a felony. <laughs> 2006, Twitter is launched and the world started sucking again. I don't know if you've ever been on Twitter. I'm on Twitter and every day I struggle with why am I on this? I use it to kind of promote my YouTube channel and things like that. I rarely get on it and discuss anything with anyone. It is just a toxic environment. No matter what you talk about on Twitter, someone will get on there and bring it back to politics and it just turns ugly. Twitter reminds me of being in high school 
school and you had that group of mean girls that would just talk bad about everyone all the time and make you feel bad about yourself. Well, Twitter is like that, but unchecked. There's no teachers and there's no counselors to talk to. It is just constant aggression and negativity. That's my own personal experience. If you have a different experience with it, I'd love to hear about it. But Twitter came about in an interesting way. Twitter's origin lie in a day-long brainstorming session held by the board members of a podcasting company called Odeo or Odeo, something like that, and Jack Dorsey, who was then an undergraduate student at New York University. He's still the man in charge over at Twitter. In the beginning, Twitter, it, it's kind of weird because it's not anything normal. They didn't have anything like it. It really wasn't a social network. It wasn't replacing anything or getting better. Like, Facebook was just sort of like MySpace space, but so much better, you know, things like that. Twitter was just its own thing. It was called microblogging for a while there, and it's just hard to figure out what it really was. It's more of a social utility. I find it hard to figure out what's going on with it. Kind of like TikTok and Snapchat. I just don't understand it really, even though I'm on it. I don't know how to get followers. I don't know how to do so many things on it. I've mastered Facebook and YouTube. I just don't understand Twitter, and I think that's their biggest problem, why they're not so much bigger. They've got a boost in popularity since politics became the main issue in the United States in 2016, but it's still, I think that's their biggest problem, is the average user really doesn't know what to make of it. Twitter did come out with this, like, chart that showed the content of tweets according to Peer Analytics. It was 3.6% was news, 3.8% was actually spam, 5.9% Nine was self-promotion or promoting something like your YouTube channel like I do. 40% was pointless babble. That's what they put on there. 37.6% was conversational and 8.7% was pass along value, which I don't know what that is. But the best part about it is the pointless babble is the number one thing that goes on on Twitter. All right, I'm done with my Twitter rant. 2014, a train derails on the Moscow Metro, killing at least 24 and injuring more than 160 people. Movies released on July 15th, 1998, There's Something About Mary, probably one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. It's up there with the top five, I would say. Such a great movie. If you've never seen it, Ben Stiller plays a guy that is obsessed with this girl that he... <laughs> almost went to prom with and here he is like 10 20 years later and he's just always been obsessed with her to the point where he's going to therapy for it and his friends are tired of hearing about it it's just a great movie well he hires a private detective to track her down find out what happened to her and then he goes to see her and it just turns into this whole thing it is a great movie if you've never seen there's something about mary cameron diaz plays mary matt dillon's in it ben stiller marky post from night court chris elliott from the david letter show Jeffrey Tambor it's a great great movie born on July 15th 1956 the late great Ian Curtis if you don't know who Ian Curtis is he was the lead singer of a band called Joy Division back in the late 70s early 80s and just as they started getting steam and they were getting popular and they were about to do their first American tour they're from Manchester England he committed suicide and we're talking like a day or so before they were supposed to leave on this big tour. And it's really sad. Now, what's amazing about this is they lose the lead singer and pretty much the heart of the band. The band went on without him. The guitarist starts singing and they became New Order, which that doesn't usually happen. When the lead singer dies or leaves the band, the band dies. But yeah, all the other members turned into New Order and they kept going. It was so sad too. He had a newborn baby. Died on July 15th. 2017, we lost Martin Landau, American film and television actor. His career began in the 1950s, including a supporting role in Alfred Hitchcock's North by Northwest and Mission Impossible. He died at the age of 89 due to a heart attack and heart disease. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, sorry we took a couple days off last week, but we're back at it. Anyway, everyone have a great day, be productive, and be nice to each other.